Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at preparing prints from your traditional paintings, specifically watercolours, but it can apply to any other kind of traditional media. And you might pick up a few tips that will help you if you're struggling with making prints. And I just wanted to shout out to Skillshare because those guys have sponsored this video. And um, Skillshare is a community filled with like over 16,000 classes where you can learn pretty much anything creative. It's so cool. Um, I particularly like finding out about other watercolor things because I've got no professional background in watercolor. So I have, I, I, I've learned quite a lot and I have a ton of classes saved on different things like watercolors and freelancing and motivation and all sorts of cool things. Um, there's classes on game design, animation, photography, you name it it probably exists. So I'm going to have a check out of the animation and the games design because I think those are really, really interesting and something I've always kind of wanted to learn, to be honest. So um, I used a particular um, painter this time called Louise de Massey, who did a watercolour tutorial about painting leaves and such. And she was really helpful and I was actually going to do a watercolour painting about flowers and leaves but then I noticed there was something at the end of her videos that talked about prepping your prints for uh, from watercolour paintings so I thought I'd do a video on that and if you're interested the first hundred people who click the link below and use the code jellybee 2 get two free months of Skillshare. And after that, it's only $10 a month um, and you've got no obligation to pay or stay around. It's completely up to you. But yeah, get signed up if you want something for free. I mean, who doesn't want something for free? <laughs> but yeah, so I decided to draw a uh, character from Transfer who you guys haven't met yet. She is a new character. If you want to find a little bit more about her, then I have some info going up on my Patreon, which I am reviving purely for transfer. So the reward tiers are going to be strictly just all about transfer. I have struggled with Patreon in the past and I'm going to really make sure that I try and keep you guys updated for those that want sneak peeks of transfer. And yeah, so if you're interested in that, go and check that out. I decided to go with a cold pressed paper because I felt it would show up the grain and highlight the issues that I know people might have with printing um, watercolour paintings. And so I used my favourite fluid, 6x8 cold press, and I used Winsor & Newton paints as always, and that is a Doent Fine water brush. I also used a, uh, ooh, what did I use? I think it was a Tom Balfour and Oscar pen to ink. And I just drew straight onto the paper. So uh, her skin here is a mix of, I think it's Indian red, ivory black, and Potter's pink, and a little bit of um, quinacridone magenta for the cheeks, just a touch. Yeah, so I, I struggle getting the, the right skin colour for my Lapta characters, but I think I've nailed it. I want like a really sort of reddish cold brown, if that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> I've really enjoyed drawing her. There's a few drawings over on my Twitter if you want to go and check that out. So yeah, still painting her. I've decided to give her a bluish green dress and there's an interesting backstory to her actually, so... Like I said, if you want to go find that out, it's going to be on my Patreon. The equipment I'll be using later on to prepare you guys is uh, Photoshop CS 5.1 and a Canon Pixma Pro 10S and my scanner is an Epson Perfection V39. You can use any scanner or printer. Um, this tutorial is going to focus on Photoshop though. So don't leave artwork on your scanner that you should have been taken to Comic-Con. That's a good tip. <laughs> and so I just scan in the image and I 
uh, scan it in at 600 dpi every single time because I like to make larger prints from my work and you can always work with something if you've got more data or a bigger size rather than trying to upscale because that's when you lose data and it doesn't look too good. So 600 dpi and just going to show it again in digital so you can see it a bit clearer. And if you've got the same kind of scanner, you can see what settings I use. I only use the unsharp mask, which doesn't sound like a real word. <laughs> so yeah, just select the image, except I selected it twice. So I had to erase the selections and select her again. <laughs> So there's the unsharp mask, it basically tightens up any blurry lines. So I take it into Photoshop and uh, she's not ready to print yet. She might look ready to print. I find that Cintiqs have a very strong backlight and therefore images can appear a lot different. And you've got to remember that prints will always come out darker than what's on the screen. That is just a rule, a complete rule with printing you have to be prepared for much darker images if you're sending them sending them away to a printer you probably won't get to check and they will just print whatever so please 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 always make sure you edit your drawings before you print them especially with a, a heavily textured paper like watercolor paper it's not good to just print straight away and i'm going to show you exactly what that looks like so here i'm just setting up my printer to print it on a six by four. I'm gonna print it on satin photo paper because that's my favorite and it's gonna be six by four. I click board, uh, do I click boardless? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, these are just the settings for my own printer. So if you don't have this printer, this is not what your screen will look like. Everyone's screen is probably gonna look very different. I, I shrink it to fit the media, which means it pulls it into the size that it recognizes. There's my printer adorned with pieces of paper and a controller <laughs> and here she is printing out Boop. so as you can see we've got that nasty watercolor image it's like taking a photograph so I would personally not sell prints that had big marks on them like this sometimes they get missed and sometimes I don't see them but if I notice that I would be like oh no gross so what I do to fix that is I go and make something called an adjustment layer. So you go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I click level. Sometimes I do curves, sometimes I do levels, and there's a little bit of a pause here because I wasn't sure which one. I decided to go with levels. And so this box pops up, I just press OK, and you've got an extra layer here. And a little box should pop up on the side, and I drag the middle grey tab down until I can really see that watercolour paper, and it just completely pops off the the screen at this point and just kind of imagine this is an extreme view of what your printer might see obviously it's not going to come out like that but you've got to know that there is hidden data there and the good thing about an adjustment layer is it doesn't affect your actual image you can just hide the layer and then put it back and it's perfect it it means you don't have to keep changing your original image or anything like that and so I adjust the levels on my own, on the actual image, and bring it out as white as possible and keep switching on that layer. And then I realize there's some edges that I want to touch up. So I get a softish brush. It's normally about 50%. Um, and I just paint white where, I don't go right to the edges because you're going to get an unnatural line. And I like the edges of watercolor, but you need to get to a point where it's going to look, you know, okay. Um, and so I print her again, and this is what she looks like this time. And this is such a simple fix to watercolour paintings, you just gotta spend about five minutes and they'll be done, and they're ready to sell then as well, or give away, or do whatever you want with. So, again, thanks a huge amount to Skillshare for sponsoring me again. They are amazing. Please go and check them out. There's so, so many good videos on that website. And if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!